Let's be honest, that EV charging course that most of us had to do was a waste of time. They give you some paperwork, you have to do some theory, obviously do some testing because every electrical course I've been on is just obsessed with testing. And then when you leave, you haven't even taken a screwdriver out of a tool bag and had a go at installing one. So if you're anything like me, when I left my course, I still didn't know how to install an EV charger. Today, I'm gonna to show you some tips on installing EV chargers and the best ways to go about it. The course is good for the theory. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the practical. All the installs that I do, a online survey has been carried out and I don't know every single little bit of what's involved in the job until I turn up. And some of the information can be a bit mixed and perspectives a little bit skewed. For example, here. Meter tails come from the meter outside and they come up the wall. Then they go into this view switch when Ahmed is running to a consumer unit in a ridiculous place, of course. So we're splitting them here and I'm putting in a new board. Anyway, forget that for a second. On the photos that I received and the video, it looked like we could go straight through the wall here and mount the charger on the other side. But in reality, I was faced with this, which means if I measure from this edge to that wall there and then measure inside, from this point to where the charger wants to go, it falls ba, 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 right here, no good. So I still needed to find a solution to hiding the cable and going back entry into this charger because that's what the customer wanted. Always make the effort to conceal the cable if you can because doing a good job will get you another job so what i've done is the cable comes down the wall it goes low level through this one as you can see which comes in this little gap here and i've tucked the cable hard up this side so now the cable's disappeared apart from that little bit which isn't too much of an issue but otherwise the cable's gone And that's allowed me to install it there, nice and tidy. Make the effort. Has this taken me longer than just going through the wall? Yes, absolutely. Was it worth doing? Yes, absolutely. The next tip, when you're drilling through the wall, bear with me, get yourself a 28 mil core drill bit. I don't know where this comes from. It's either Screwfix or Tool Station. I got it about five years ago. The brand's Erbra and that is just a normal arbor, an extended arbor, SDS. Don't drill on hammer though. And what you'll get is a nice clean hole. You also, when you're installing the hypervolt, just, in a, just a bonus tip, when you're installing a hypervolt, if you just put a 20 mil hole through there and you try and put your charger on, you're gonna struggle. I'll show you why in just a second. Tip number three. Most EV chargers have enough room inside to invert a stuffing gland. I see lots of chargers out there where they've just drilled a hole and filled it with silicon. Don't do that. Invert a stuffing gland. It's gonna help that IP rating. But because of that, when you put it on to the bracket, you need some play because it has these little hooks here, these edges, which sit on there. And if you haven't got the play, you're gonna really struggle getting this on there. So a 28 mil core drill bit's perfect. Just do it. Tip number four, when you're putting this on here, camera's in a really bad position. I haven't silicon that yet, just wait. Because I have that play, that lifts on, and that's there ready to go. But where do I strip the cable? Get a marker. and put a mark on the edge of the stuffing gland. Then take the charger back off and strip your cable. This is an EV Ultra cable stripper. There's all sorts of different makes. This is by Doncasters. It's good, Google it, it works, trust me. And you can hook it on there. It looks like that. Little blade there. Pop that on there, like that. Spin it round and then score the cable. This will then pop off and then do it again on the inner sheath.
Now, get your silicon and fill the hole up and just bang loads in there. Why are we doing this when we're using a stuffing gland? Belt and braces, that's why. Belt and braces. Now you can take the charger, slide this back on, nip it up, get a pair of grips and nip the stuffing gland up. And now that is compressed against the cable. Cable, skipped the cable part. I use Doncaster cables, EV Ultra, six mil as standard. Inside this cable, you have obviously your line, your neutral and your earth and you have a Cat5. You can get two sorts of this cable, one with a Cat5 in it with four pairs and another one with just the one pair. If I was you, just use the one with the four pairs. That allows connections for your CT. It allows also connections if you need to hardwire an internet connection. So it's a little bit more maybe, not a lot, just do it. Future proof, don't get caught out. What is a CT? Well, this is a CT and this is used for load curtailment. It's gonna protect the 100 amp fuse, which is inside here. We'll come back to this and I'll show you where I install it once I've got to that part of the job. The main feed to the main board comes out of this 100 amp fuse and then the cable runs up all the way along, disappears, but it ends up around there. So if I wanted to use that board, I'd have to drill through the wall and then clip cables all the way around or trench across here To the charging position so the way i've done it is much nicer because this is the way that i've chosen to install this job my phone's going off i'll be back hello can i help you Hi, Adam. now because i'm splitting the meter tails you can either install a henley block or you can install these 100 amp terminal blocks my advice to you would be use 100 amp terminal blocks they're cleaner they're nicer they're a better actual product a little bit dearer but let's up our game and do the best job possible. These are the Proteus ones, mustard. Next, I'm installing an additional consumer unit for the EV charger. Because I'm installing an additional consumer unit, why just install a consumer unit with one way for the charger? Makes no sense. If you've got room, put a board like this in, which is a Proteus five-way board, which gives me a couple of spare ways for future use. Why not? This literally costs the same as a fuse box EV consumer unit. It makes perfect sense to me. Extra capacity here, if required, in a garage. With that EV Ultra cable that I installed, you saw it at the charger, and this is it at the consumer unit. Ideally, if you can avoid it and you're doing like ethernet connections, try and avoid leaving them inside the consumer unit. What I like to do is this. There's my EV Ultra cable coming into a stuffing gland because it's not SWA, that the Cat5 then comes back out and I've prepared it into a little box here. What this means is under any sort of fault conditions or, once, or when you're commissioning the charger, if there's a problem with the CT connection or ethernet connection, you don't have to open up a live enclosure to deal with it because it's separate outside, safe. My next tip is if you're not in a situation like I am where you're, where you're installing a separate consumer unit, if you're doing that, you should have surge protection in it. If you're using an existing consumer unit, but you've only got one spare way, for example, and there's not enough room to install surge, inside the meter cupboard, you can install one of these, which is a meter tails isolator, basically, with surge built in. This is gonna protect the entire installation. Why am I doing this here where my board has surge in? because my customer wanted surge on the existing board as well, and there's not enough room for it. That's why I'm doing this. Get out of jail, good little product, Proteus again. CTs and CT connections, where do they go? I've forgotten what tip we're up to, so let's just go with five, tip five. CT connections inside here, the Cat5 goes to a little plug, plug it in there, job done. The CT clamp, but I'll tell you where it doesn't go, and it doesn't go in there. You absolute lunatics who are doing that. Let me show you where it goes. La, la, la. Ba, ba, ba. Right, Cat5 comes back out into there, joined up there, 
and then the CT goes on here on the line conductor before any Henle or terminal block. That way this is measuring the entire installation and not just this one and not just that one. Okay, simples. Ferrules, should you ferrule up your cable? Well, no, you don't have to, but can you? Yes, is there anything wrong with doing it? No, I just like doing it and I think it looks better. Do you need to install an RCD for an EV charger? Answer is yes, you do. You need to install a double pole, a true double pole RCBO, such as that one there. What if the EV charger has built-in RCD protection? Well, I've got a whole video on the Zappi on this, which I'll leave in the description below. If you're installing a Zappi without an RCD, you better watch that video. Now, let's say you, you are installing an EV charger, or you have been, and it's because they have built-in RCDs. You need to check to see if it is a digital RCD because some of these do not have a BS standard, so they're not recognized and you need to ins install upstream RCD protection. Let's say you are installing an EV charger with RCD perfect incredible protection. Does the rest of the install require RCD protection? Because that RCD will only be protecting from that charging point onwards and not your actual installation. My advice to you would be just install an upstream RCD belt and braces, nothing can go wrong that way, but that's just my advice. Once you have finished your EV install, it may be worth, or even before you've carried out your EV install, if you've not done them before, it might be worth getting in touch with the manufacturer to see if they have any sort of in-house training or an online training guide so you can see exactly what's involved because the installation of this is pretty simple, but complications occur when it comes to testing, commissioning and setting up the app. And you shouldn't really be leaving site without running through this app with your client to make sure they're completely happy. Otherwise, they will be phoning you up asking you why the charger is not working. So familiarize yourself with the app, familiarize yourself with the technical spec, install instructions of the charger that you're installing, and you won't go wrong. So planning and organization are absolutely key for a smooth install. Keep your install neat and tidy. Make the extra effort. Light cleaning the cable. Explain everything that you need to explain to the client because although things in the electrical world to you and me may be bread and butter, it is not to someone with no electrical experience. So take your time and explain everything to your client. The protection, the consumer unit, how it works, the surge protection, what to look out for, how often to test the RCD, how the charger works, how the app works, and you can't go wrong. And then finally, I have a few thank yous to make. Huge shout out and thank you to everyone who's been supporting me and my channel. I really appreciate everyone who buys me a coffee, including Justin. Love the videos, keep up the good work. Brilliant advice and work is spot on. I wish I can come and do some jobs with you and learn more. Hopefully you enjoy the five coffees on me. That is very generous. I don't know what area you're in, Justin, but maybe get in touch. And if I can maybe give you a day or something to show some tips and tricks, then we can maybe sort that out. But it depends on a few things. Barry Khan, howdy Adam. Thank you for your videos and sharing the journey and guidance. I recommended you to friends as well. Enjoy the coffees. Barry, thank you so much. Again, absolute legend. MTES Electrical. Just thought I'd buy you a coffee, Adam. Such a nice guy and true professional. Enjoying watching your content this morning. Thank you, you legend. Craig Smith, love watching your content. Used to be a sparky until become paramedic. Do miss the commercial side though. No fancy gimmicks, just honest content. Enjoy the coffee. Craig, thank you for being a paramedic. You guys are incredible. So so hats off to you. I don't know where I really got up to last time, so we're gonna carry on with this. Gen X Sparky. Hello, Phil. Enjoy your coffee, mate. I'll have a cafe Nero whilst watching your next video. Legend. I think that's about it. Anyway, thank you everyone for supporting me. Uh, like and subscribe. Hope you found this video useful. See you next week.